of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for another Bible Preach session. It's a beautiful, blessed Friday evening at 7 p.m. at Sydney local time. I pray those who are with us here present in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming that you're always in good health and in good spirit in Jesus' mighty name. And uh, those who are watching us from Australia and abroad, may the Lord Jesus guide you, bless you, and protect you always. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your strength. He, my prayer, O God, give e to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and oppressors have sought after my life. They have not set God before them. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with those who uphold my life. He will repay my enemies for their evil. Cut them off in your truth. I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me out of all trouble, and my eye has seen its desire upon my enemies. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Good. I can't hear you. Uh, not bad. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome. Any new faces for the first time with us? We've got a few here and, and over there and over there and over here. No, not there. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, to all the beautiful new faces for the first time, a very warm welcome to everyone. And I pray this is not going to be the last time. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble with me because I have red belt in karate. And uh, if you don't come, I'll be coming after you. Come on, that's a joke. <laughs> that's just a joke, okay? Okay. We've got a young man here at the front row. Tomorrow is his birthday. So can you wish him a very happy birthday for tomorrow, please? That's it. Well done, champ. I won't mention your name. I'll keep it anonymous, okay? Yeah, beautiful. Um, well, um, we're going to continue our uh, commentary on the book of Revelation, as you uh, may know. Um, last week, uh, we started chapter 5, and we were going to um, explain verses 1 to 6, but we got stuck at verse 1, and it took the entire an hour and a half speaking about one verse. Today, is going to take about 10 hours to speak about the second verse. All right, so you are in for a great treat. Fasten your seat belts. You are in for a beautiful flight. Don't talk to me. I'm flying the plane. <laughs> Here we go. Revelation chapter 5, verses 2 to 6. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the, but one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And all glory 
be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I want to hear an A. Amen. Amen to that. Jesus is stunning. Stunning. He is just one. There is none like him. All right. Well, last week we spoke about verse 1. And verse 1, I'll just read it. It's not on the screen, but I'll just read it, and we will just continue our journey. Verse 1 says, And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. That was our topic last week for about an hour and a half. And I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll. And we said that this scroll is the Word of God. And the Word of God is judgment to mankind, to those who do not believe in it, to those who do not accept the Word. So the right hand is where the scroll is, where the Word of God is. Therefore, the right hand here is speaking of judgment. Right hand represent the judgment of God. Keep that in mind. We'll come to it later. Verse 2. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? This strong angel cried out and said, Who is worthy to open this scroll and loose its seven seals? He's asking a question. For as long as the scroll remains sealed, we are judged. The day the scroll is opened, we pass and not enter God's judgment. As long as it remains sealed, we are all judged. And if God judges all, everyone will end up in hell, eternal death, eternal condemnation. But if the seal gets opened, we will not be judged. So this strong angel is yell, screaming out and saying, who is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seven seals? Now, verse 3 says, and no one, and no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. No one was worthy, neither in heaven, nor on earth, nor beneath the earth, was worthy to open it or even to look at it. Now, who is this strong angel saying or asking who is worthy to open the seal, to open the scroll and loose its seals? This strong angel here is Satan. Why? Because Satan has always been the complainer against humanity. He complained us to God. He went and said, look at your people, the handwork of your own, look at them how they are treating you. Look at, our, look at them how they are behaving. Everything you asked them to do, they disobeyed you. Everything you expected of them, you received the opposite in return. Look at him. He whinged, complained against us to God. So he is that strong angel that is screaming and saying, who can open, who is worthy to open this scroll and lose its seven seals? The reply came, no one can open this scroll. Neither in heaven, nor on earth, nor beneath it. Man, we're in trouble. If no one can open this scroll, neither in heaven, nor on earth, nor beneath it, then who can? We're in deep trouble. Who is in heaven? The angels. Who is on earth? Humanity. Who is beneath it? Satan and his foul spirits. Now, beneath the earth or under the earth, it is not a literal meaning that Satan lives under the earth. No. But he's talking about levels. 
about um, sort of um, in an orderly fashion the book of Revelation is putting it he's saying angels are number one second to the angels is the human race why because the human race is weaker than the angelic orders and less knowledgeable than the angelic orders so angels are powerful and extremely knowledgeable they come first second to them is the human race and below the human race is satan since satan disobeyed god and was kicked out from the presence of god he became lower than this piece of dust called the human being he became lower so angels humans satan none of them are worthy to open the scroll and loose its seals why none of them because the scroll we said is the word of god and where was the scroll in verse one at the right hand of the one who sits on the throne who said who sits on the throne god the divine christ the divine the king of kings and lord of lords sits on the throne so at the right hand is his word is his judgment why his judgment because adam and in the entire human race broke god's word the scroll the word of god was broken by the human race and since it was broken the word had to come back and judge everyone that broke it you break the law the law breaks you and what did we say last time in depth God never changes his mind God is holy meaning never changing God he can't say something and do something else he can't say something and go back on his word yet he is our Heavenly Father but the earthly father says something and does something else I'll give you a very simple analogy a father will come to his son the father is upset now with the son he says listen mate if you don't do this I'll kill you the father out of frustration says to the to his own son if you don't do this mate I'm gonna kill you okay the son doesn't do it does the father kill his son no he just said it but he never is gonna do what he says if God the father says if you break my word you're gonna die guess what <laughs> he sticks to his word <laughs> he's gonna do it so when we broke his word the wage of sin is death Adam the day you eat from the forbidden tree surely you shall die surely means there is no escape Adam so you better think a million zillion times before you disobey my order why because I am the never changing God whatever I say I do I your heavenly father not like your earthly father when I say you're gonna die you're gonna die at do me so you better behave at do me that's a uh, that's a spoiled kind of a approach yes yeah, we're spoiling Adam call him a doom by the way is it hot uh, some are using um, fans well it's my presence I'm normally hot you see can we maybe make it a little bit cooler yeah. so now the scroll was the word was broken judgment came everybody has to die that's why neither angels nor human nor Satan and his foul spirits can open the scroll because the one who was offended was God and God is the only infinite being there is neither a beginning to his beginning nor an end to his end angels have a beginning humans have a beginning Satan has a beginning therefore the one we offended our sin became greater than angels than humans than Satan and foul spirits only God can wash away an infinite sin and we spoke about this more in details last week I'm not gonna repeat it so now that's why 
This strong angel Satan, he is now coming and saying to God, well, God, guess what? You're in trouble. You see, I know you don't change your mind. And I know you don't go back on your word. And you said to the human race, you break my word, you will be judged by my word, i.e. you all gonna die because whoever enters God's judgment will never come out of it righteous. For God will hold you on all of the errors you've made, whether in thought or in deed. He will put a nice movie in front of you and he'll play all of your sins before your very eye. No one can escape the wisdom and the knowledge of God. He is all knowledge. Everything is vividly clear right before his eyes, even if we do things in the secret. Nothing is secret to God. So therefore, we offended the infinite God. Our sin, our debt is greater than everything that is finite. The only one that can pay the infinite debt is the infinite being, and that is God. That's why God had to become a man on earth to save us forever. It's an infinite debt. Only the infinite God can wash it away, pay the price. So now it says, and no one, neither in heaven, angels, nor on earth, men, nor under the earth, below the human race is the is Satan and his foul spirits, because the sin is greater than all of them. John the Beloved in verse 4 says, so I wept much, he cried like a baby, because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. When I heard the voice saying, no one is worthy, neither in heaven nor on earth nor beneath it, to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals, he said, I fell on the ground and I wept so much because I said, we are definitely dead. Why? For as long as the scroll remains sealed, we are judged. The day that comes, that someone comes along and opens the scroll, whoever believes in that someone who was able to open the scroll, you will escape the judgment of God. You will not be judged, meaning you will live forever. So he said, I fell on the ground, I fell on my face, and I wept much because I said, we are all going to perish now. If no one is worthy to open it, then who is? And then he said, one of the elders, the elders, the 24 elders that sat around the throne. Remember, we spoke about this in chapter 1 of Genesis. And we're going to come later on in this chapter about the 24 elders. So I said, one of the elders came to me. And what did he say? But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. One is worthy, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the root of David. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the only one that is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seven seals. Jesus Christ. Wow. Now, John the Beloved, where is he seeing this in heaven? Remember this. Now this is a, an answer to Jehovah's Witnesses that say Jehovah is greater than Jesus Christ. Well, John the Beloved said that in heaven there is only one worthy to open the scroll. Now the scroll is the Word of God. The Word of God is the judgment of God 
to the entire human race. Who is the judge? Only God. There is no one else but Him. Only God qualifies to judge. And John the Beloved saw this in heaven. And he said, there is only one worthy to open the scroll. And that is the lion from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, if Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all glory to his holy name, is the only one worthy to open the scroll in heaven, then where is Jehovah? Where is God? If God is greater than Jesus, and there is only Jesus that is worthy, then isn't Jehovah worthy? If Jehovah was greater than Jesus Christ, wouldn't he be the worthy one, not Jesus? But here it says, it is Jesus only. What does that tell you and me? Christ is Jehovah. He is God, the Almighty, revealed in the flesh the creator of everyone, everything that is visible and invisible. Amen? Amen. Now behold, John the Beloved, do not weep and do not be so hopeless. I just want to stand for a moment and contemplate on this. How many times in our life on earth, how many times with our journey in this, in this wilderness of this world, how many times have we fell on the ground and said, I am dead, I am finished, it is all over, no one can help me, no one can come to my rescue. You know what, it's a dead end. It is finished. I can't do it. No one can. You know, the doctor said it's over. The lawyer said it's finished. The whole world have shut their door in my face. And I am at a dead end. I have given up. And I'm crying for myself because I didn't want to get to this moment of, of, in my life where I hate my own self. I am so disappointed with me. I am so disappointed with everyone and everything and life in general. I've given up and I cried. The voice, an elder came and said, why are you crying? Behold, there is one that can come to your rescue. When we say it is impossible, one and one only can say what is impossible to men is possible to God for I am God revealed in the flesh and my name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth how dare you say it is over when I am your Lord how dare you you say it is it is finished when I am the I am the Alpha and the Omega how could you say I am dead when I raise the dead from the grave with one word, Lazarus, come forth. He was rotted in the grave for four days, yet Jesus raised him to fullness and perfection with one word. It is never too late, for as long as Christ lives, I live. You better have faith. Don't ever give up. Don't ever. He said, but I know you are only human. You're a piece of dust. You're so weak. I know when you encounter an obstacle in life, you struggle. And it's so easy for all of us to give up and to give in to it. And who came to, to John's rescue? Not an angel, an elder. Now why? Why wouldn't an angel come to the rescue? No, an elder came. An elder meaning, once upon a time, this elder was a human being like me and you. An angel has no body. An angel has no soul. Angels are only spirits. Therefore, angels do not share our feelings and emotions. Angels do not understand what tears are and pains are. But an elder who lived on earth shares everything that you and I share. 
An elder out of the 24. Who are the 24 elders? The church of Christ, both of the Old and the New Testament. The Lord Jesus has two branches to his beloved church. The Old Testament church made out of the 12 tribes of Israel. And the New Testament church made out of the 12 apostles. 12 of the Old Testament and 12 of the New Testament 12 and 12, 24. The 24 elders is the church of Christ, both Old and New Testament, and he is the only good shepherd to both branches. So, this elder, since he is one of the 24, so he is of the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament prophets, the New Testament, the Gospels, the epistles of St. Paul and the, and, and the book of Acts and the Catholicons, the, uh, the epistles of St. Peter, you know, John and James and Jude, all these are this elder. When you go to the Old Testament, what are the prophets of the Old Testament saying? They are saying hope in Christ. For no matter what happens, we are awaiting for the coming of the Messiah. When the Messiah comes, all of those who have slept on the hope of resurrection, when Christ comes, he will raise us all from the dead. So prophets of the Old Testament give you hope that salvation is coming your way, even if all the doors are shut in your face. Christ is the only one that is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seven seals. Nothing stands in the Lord's way. No matter how many doors Satan tries to shut, Jesus will make you not open the door, he'll make you walk through the closed door. <laughs> that is Jesus, baby. Jesus will not come and open the door, he'll say, my son, I don't need to open doors. Just like I walked through closed doors and closed windows in that upper room, I will give you that authority to walk through closed doors. So the prophets of the Old Testament give you hope. And the elder of the New Testament give you salvation, redemption. Christ is here now. What are you worried about? There was this governor in Milano, Italy. He was a very faithful Christian to the Lord Jesus. And he was a governor of Milano, Italy. The people of Milano used to come to him and open up to him with their problems and troubles and issues of life. So he used to address them as much as he could. One day he said, People always come to me with their burdens and their troubles and their issues. You know what? Why are they coming to me? Here is what I'm going to say to them. So he walks out and there was a lot of people waiting for him. He said, my beloved people of Milano, since God became man, what is your problem? There is no problem. Since God became man, you don't have a problem anymore. You know why? Because... For as long as God was only God, it was a problem when you had a problem. Because you cannot go to this God and tell him your problem since you don't know him, you can't get to him, you can't understand him, you can't see him, you can't, you can't, you can't. Therefore, you are stuck with your problem. But since God became man, you can go and see him now and talk to him, embrace him, hug him, and tell him everything that is bothering you. So you don't have a problem since God became man. This God who became man is the lion of the tribe of Judah and the root of David. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So this tribe of Judah, this lion, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Today I'll be very generous with you guys. I'll let you go early. 
I'll leave you with this. <laughs> now, to those who are coming for the first time, oh, you probably have heard me saying this on YouTube, but every time I say, I'll leave you with this, everybody laughs because they know they will never hear, hear the end of it. I'll leave you with this and it never ends. And I'll leave you with this and I'll leave you with this. And after 10 hours, I still i am saying, and I'll leave you with this. So whenever you hear me say, I'll leave you with this, get up and run away, please. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be sleeping here tonight. <laughs> and I would love for you to stay in the church. Don't go anywhere, especially downtown, brother. I kill you. My name is Ahmed. <laughs> we need to pray for Ahmed. <laughs> Now, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the root of David. David is a king. And by the way, the Israelite people, till now, the most venerated king of the entire Israelite history is David. The flag of Israel has the star of David. The flag of Israel now has the star of David, King David. His tomb is actually in Mount Zion. Now Mount Zion is part of this mountain where once upon a time the temple of Solomon was built upon. Mount Zion is very, very holy place, especially to the Jewish people. God willing, one day you go to Israel and visit Jerusalem, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll visit Mount Zion because we've been there and it's a magnificent place. Israel is just stunning. You may have a chance to go this year with us. Mm. We'll be making an announcement soon. <laughs> and I looked. So this lion of the tribe of Judah is worthy. Verse 6, And I looked... And behold, in the midst of the throne, and in the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain. The elder said to John the Beloved, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is the one who is worthy for he has prevailed and he is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seven seals so what did this elder say to John the lion of the of the tribe of Judah he said verse 6 and I looked John the beloved he said and I looked and behold in the midst of the throne now who sits on the throne God the divine Christ the King is sitting on the throne, the throne of the king. And God in his nature is king. God in his nature is king. So, and in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the 24 elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain. The elder said to John, the lion of the tribe of Judah is worthy. He said, when I looked, I saw a lamb, not a lion. I saw a sheep. But hang on, Jono, which one is it? Is it the lion or the lamb? He said, both. He is the lion and he is the lamb at the same time. And this lamb was standing, but he was slain. And to slay an animal, you kill it. And when you kill it, the animal can't stand. So this lamb was killed, but is standing, is alive, living. So who was the lamb that was slain, killed, and yet lived, came back to life again? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He was slain on the cross on Calvary. He was put in the tomb, but on the third day he rose from the dead. The lamb that was slain stood on its feet on the third day, rose from the dead, victorious, triumphant forever. But the lion of Judah, and I looked and I saw a lamb, not a lion. 
Now, for the next 10 hours, I'd like to focus on this. For any Christian, for any faithful, for any human being that is seeking God, the true God, Christ the King, you need to have two things in you at the same time in order to be spiritually successful and in every aspect of life prosperous. Two things. You need to be a lion and you need to be a lamb at the same time. Not a lion at one stage and a lamb at another stage. No, the lion and the lamb, they walk together all the time at every single moment of life. Both of them have to be present. Now, why is he the lion? Why is Jesus Christ here resembled by the lion? Well, we know the lion is the king of the jungle. And Christ is the king of all kings. So, symbolically speaking, there is certain characteristics in an actual lion as an animal. Those characteristics are taken and given to Christ. So just like the lion is a king of the jungle, Christ is the king of all kings. Now because he is the lion, because when we read in verse 2, then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. We said this strong angel is Satan. Satan is resembled in the epistle of St. Peter as the roaring lion seeking those whom he can swallow and devour. So Satan is also resembled as a lion. But in which way he is resembled as a lion? As the vicious killer. Satan is so vicious, he devours the prey and destroys that prey. Just like Satan is a lion that tries to kill humanity, he needs to be met by another lion like him. Lions fight with lions. Chicken can't fight with a lion. You need a lion to withstand another lion. So, Satan, you're a lion. Jesus, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He came and he said, I am the lion from the tribe of Judah. And let me see, Satan, what kind of a lion you are when you face the lion of the tribe of Judah. When Jesus came as the lion and he said to Satan, come on, let's fight. Satan looked at Jesus as the lion from the tribe of Judah. Satan turned from a lion into a little mouse and ran away. Because when you face this lion, Jesus, there is no other lion that can roar anymore. Oh, oh la la, when Jesus shows you a touch, a drop of his mightiness and power. I feel sorry for those people who follow Satan. I feel sorry for those people who acknowledge Satan. I feel sorry for those people who fear Satan and be silent to the truth. I feel sorry. So the lion came to face Satan, the lion. And Satan became a mouse when he met the lion from the tribe of Judah. Now, but I looked back and I saw a lamb. The Lord Jesus. In the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 5. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5. The Lord Jesus says two things. He said, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. In another place, the Lord Jesus says, be innocent as a dove and be wise as a serpent. Be innocent as a dove and be wise as a serpent. 
You are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. You are the lion and you are the lamb. Two parallel lines that can never meet. But these two parallel lines, if you have them in your life, every single moment of your life, you are a successful Christian. You imitate your Christ. I was going to say something. The Holy Spirit will remind me later. A lion, the one that roars and shakes the whole earth. A lamb, the one that is so quiet, no one hears the sound of it. Opposite. See, I told you the Holy Spirit will remind me. <laughs> As one of the church fathers said, For every theology is stavrology, and for every orthodoxy is paradoxy. I'll say it again. He said, for every theology is stavrology, and for every, the for every orthodoxy there is paradoxy. Every theology is stavrology. Stavros in Greek means the cross. Stavros, cross. So every theology is the cross, Stavrology. And every orthodoxy is paradoxy. Because when you read the entire Gospels, you read the entire Bible, they all focus and are centered around the cross. Christianity is about the cross. You take the cross out, there is no Christianity. You deny the cross, you're not a Christian. Christianity ceases because the cross is the center of the Christian faith. For every theology, the study of the divine is stavrology, is the cross, and every orthodoxy, true faith, is paradoxy, parallel line. Paradoxy means two parallel lines never meet. God brought out of the grave life. <laughs> You can't use your logic. You see, you cannot use your head when you walk with God. Because when you use your head, your head will lead you to logic. Logic says one plus one equals two. God says one plus one equals one. Good luck using your head. Now, paradoxy, lion and lamb. This is paradoxy, two parallel lines never meet, but they are perfect. Salt and light. Two parallel lines, salt from the earth, light from heaven. Opposite, parallel lines. Innocent as a dove, wise as a serpent, parallel lines. Now why is he the lion and the lamb? And why do we need to be the lion and the lamb, the salt and the light, the dove and the snake? Why, innocent as a dove, wise as a snake. Don't be a snake, but be wise as a snake. <laughs> now we come to the lion. The Lord Jesus says to be a successful Christian, to be a, a, a true servant of Christ that brings people to me, I, Jesus Christ, I want you to be the lion and the lamb at the same time. I want you to be the lion when it comes to stand for the truth, to fight for the truth, and to stand firm in what you believe as your Jesus has taught you. You be the lion and let the whole world rumble before your feet and tell the world, this is what my Jesus says and this what I will do as his servant. You go against me, you do whatever, I will speak the truth. And there is no compromise. That's a lion. Don't be a chicken. Chickens don't enter God's kingdom. Only lions do. So don't just stand at the pulpit and say, Hallelujah, Jesus loves you. Jesus wants you to be healthy. Get a life. Yes, get a life. 
Where was the lion that Christ put in you when all those evil things were happening? Where was the lion in you? You became a chicken as a church leader. Did money turn you into a chicken? Where was the lion? See, we think Christianity is just a, a passage we read and a gospel we preach or a song we sing or a shout we shout, Hallelujah, Jesus is here. I'm filled by the Holy Spirit. Ha, 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 ha. Somebody hold me. I'm... You know what? Please, please, please. I know it's, I know it's, 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 um, it's very sad. It's, it's laughable matter, but it's very sad. Christianity is a life. You need to live it every single moment. It's not a time on the pulpit or on the stage or a guitar in your hand and you say, Jesus is the Lamb of God. No. It is a life. You need to live Christ every single moment. You need to be a warrior for the Lord. Not a singer. Not an actor. A warrior. A lion, be a lion when it comes to the truth and speaking of the truth. And be a lamb when it comes to the salvation of humanity. Sacrifice your life to bring one soul to Christ. <laughs> when it comes to saving a soul, be the lamb. Don't ever let anyone out of the church, even if that person that entered the church now came out of the brothel, you embrace him. You embrace him. You are not here to judge. You are here to save. But without compromising the truth. <laughs> Don't just embrace. Give him the truth, but as a lamb. <laughs> But for the world, I'm not a lamb, I'm a lion. But for salvation of souls, no, no. I will slain myself to save you, my, my dear friend. Be a lion for the truth. Be a lamb for saving souls. Be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Wow. Jesus is incredible, man. It's just, he talks so simplistically, yet so much depth and wisdom. That's why he is God. It takes a wise man to speak simplistic, simplistic things. It takes a wise man to speak in a simplistic term. Be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Wow, light comes from heaven. Salt comes from earth. The Lord Jesus says, you want to be a, a, a successful servant? You want to be a true follower of, of your Lord Jesus? You better first live with me in heaven. Because if you don't live with me in heaven, you can't make people taste me on earth. You see, the salt, when you add it to the food you're cooking, the salt dissolves in whatever you are cooking. You don't see the salt any longer. But what happens once the food is cooked? You taste the flavor of that salt in that food. But you don't see the salt. Why? Because the salt dissolved in that food and was hidden in that entire food, in that meal. But when you ate, you said, wow, this food tastes so beautiful. That beautiful taste was that salt that gave it nice flavor. You see, Christ is living in you. The world do not see him. The world do not see him, they see you. But when you are living with Christ as the light in heaven, when you live with him, you will give people the taste of Christ on earth, the salt. But it takes dissolvement 
What is dissolvement? Sacrifice. What is sacrifice? Self-denial. I no longer exist, but Christ who lives in me is the one who is my existence. So when you speak to people, let people see Jesus, not you. Let people see the Lord. You become the salt, dissolve into Christ and let people taste Christ, not you. Because when they taste me, I am nothing but bitter. But when they taste the Lord, they say, now I am back to life. Be the salt. But you cannot make people taste Christ that is in you unless you live with him in heaven, the light. The Lord Jesus entered the house of Lazarus, Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead after four days. Mary and Martha were Lazarus' sisters. Mary came and sat at the feet of the Lord. Martha was too busy in the kitchen, chopping baby, cooking, sizzling. And then Martha was so busy trying to prepare a meal. Jesus is in, in our house. Whoa. So she turns around and she sees Mary cares for nothing. She is so quiet, humble, sitting at the feet of the Lord, not a whisper, as if nothing is happening in the kitchen. World War Three is happening in the kitchen. So Martha, out of frustration at her sister, turns to the Lord. Lord, can you please tell her off? Rebuke my sister. Shame on her. Doesn't she see her sister so much in trouble and so busy? And she does not move a finger. Tell her to get up and help me. Thinking that the Lord is going to rebuke Mary. The Lord turns to Martha and says, Martha, Martha. Martha, Martha, there is only one thing that is asked of anyone. And your sister Mary chose that portion, sitting at the feet. Martha, the house is mine, not yours. The house is mine. But you know what, Martha? The house requires Mary and Martha at the same time, two parallel lines. But there is priorities here. Martha, you cannot serve me in my house unless you first sit at my feet. How can you serve in the master's house if you don't get to know the master first? How can you know what I want of you to do in my house if you don't sit at my feet and listen to the teacher, to the great teacher, the one and only. If you don't sit at my feet and I teach you what you need to do, you can never be successful in my home. You cannot serve me. You need to get to know me to serve me. You need to be the light in order to be the salt. You need to live with me in heaven in order to bring heaven to earth and bring people to my heaven. You can't live in darkness and expect people to see Christ in you. Impossible. Christ is the light of the world. Need to move on. Innocent as a dove, wise as a serpent. Man. Innocence is loyalty. Wisdom is power. Innocence is loyalty. Wisdom is power. Now, innocence alone is ignorance. Wisdom alone is evilness. Satan is wise, but not innocent. Therefore, Satan is evil. People are sinners. People, naturally speaking, they are not evil. They are sinners. But when are they called evildoers? when they do Satan deeds. And 
love it when they do Satan deeds. They love it, then they are evildoers. But those who sin and hate it, they are sinners. Christ came to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Christ came for you. All of us are sinners. When you sin and you hate it, Christ is, he came exactly for you. When you sin and you love it, Satan is your portion. You are an evildoer. So now, wisdom alone is evilness. Innocence alone is ignorance. Innocence and wisdom put together is the power of God. What is the power of God? The Holy Cross. St. Paul puts it beautifully. He says the cross to the Greeks is ignorance. To the Jews is a stumbling stone. But to us, the saved ones, is the power of God. Why is it ignorance to the Greeks? Because he's speaking to the big heads, Plato and Socrates, the philosophers of the world. Big heads, baby. Big calibers. So you speak to a wise man and go and say to this great philosopher, a man of wisdom, say to him, you know what, I worship God. He's going to say, which God is the one do you worship? I'm going to say, the one who was nailed on the cross and died on the cross. He is my God. He's going to say, what an ignorant man you are. How can you worship a God that was nailed on the cross? This is a very weak God. That is ignorance. And to the Jews is a stumbling stone because to the Jews, the Messiah never dies. And how dare you, you say to me, our Messiah was crucified. Crucifixion is degradation, humility at its lowest level. And you're saying Messiah was, you know, brought to this low level, impossible. This is a stumbling stone for me. But to me, I, Paul, the saved one, it is the power of God because the cross is the innocence of the dove and the wisdom as a snake. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. Why a dove? A dove out of the entire birds of the sky, out of the entire birds of the sky, any other bird than a, than a dove, any other bird, when they build a nest and have their own babies, the moment they just sense, not see, they just sense there is danger coming, straight away they pack up and leave and go and build a nest elsewhere. They shift their path, they shift their position, their location. The dove builds a nest, lays those eggs and babies, goes searching for food for the babies, comes back, the enemy has devoured some of her babies. Some are missing. Some are killed and left in the nest. The dove sits in the nest and mourns like a human being. The tears of the dove are exactly like a human. Like a human tears. They mourn exactly like a human being. The dove. Exactly. Same feeling. She cries. Her heart is shattered. She is devastated for the loss of her children but the dove never moves her nest elsewhere stays there brings more babies and continues the Lord says I want you to be as innocent as the dove innocence is loyalty why did I say loyalty he's saying the Lord you want to be a successful servant you want to be a true Christian no matter how many times you get persecuted for the sake of your Lord don't ever shift your way and move away from me don't ever change your position don't ever walk from the path that I put you in stand firm in there and be faithful to your Lord because the Lord will give you his glory in the end be like a dove don't ever shift your nest out of fear out of persecution and change your religion change your faith change your principle ethics and values and morals in Christianity don't be as wise as a serpent the serpent the moment it faces an enemy that realizes this enemy is more powerful than me the serpent does one thing 
curls that body of, 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 of hers on that head, covers the head. The enemy devours the body, chops the snake to pieces. As long as the head is intact, the snake cannot die. The body is chopped to pieces. After a little while, the body will regrow again and the snake will go on its own life as if nothing's happened. The day you can kill the snake is when you crush the head. The Lord says, I gave you my word. Keep my word intact in your head. Don't let anyone brainwash you and take the truth out of here. Stay firm. Protect the head. Be wise. Be wise. We protect the true faith. We stand firm in the true way. And we live with Christ in heaven light. We will make the world taste the sweetness of Christ on earth, salt. And be like a lion roaring for the truth. And be a lamb slain for the salvation of mankind. Bring people to Christ and be the servant of everyone. And I'll finish it off on this. I didn't say I'll leave you with this. There's a difference. And in the midst of the throne and of the four creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain. Now why John the Beloved or the Holy Spirit reveals through John the Beloved that this lamb was in the midst of the throne? Why? Because the lamb is the humanity of Christ. The, th the one who sits on the throne is the divinity of Christ. Christ is perfect God, King, and perfect Lamb, Priest. Christ is perfect God, King, and perfect Lamb, Priest. Christ, King, Divinity, Priest, Humanity. His humanity was in the midst, which is the Lamb, was in the midst of the throne, meaning humanity was united completely and perfectly to Divinity. So divinity was revealed in fullness in this humanity called Jesus of Nazareth. God was revealed in Jesus in absolute perfection and completion. That's what the midst of the throne here refers to. The perfect unity and revelation of divinity in humanity. That is the midst. Humanity united to divinity perfectly and completely. And this lamb have having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Last time we said seven spirits. God does not have seven spirits. God has only one spirit. That the Holy Spirit is God and God is one spirit only. But the seven spirits are the seven sacraments of the apostolic true church of Christ where the Holy Spirit operates through these seven sacraments to bring salvation to the human race or to the Christian world. So these are the seven sacraments. But the Lord, this lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of, um, of God sent out into all the earth. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits. Seven spirits, seven sacraments, baptism, priesthood, body and blood of Christ, Holy Eucharist, uh, the Olies. Now, the seven horns and seven eyes. Seven horns. When you read in the Holy Bible about horns, it talks about authority, kingdoms. Kingdoms. So horns, kingdoms. What is kingdom? That is authority. What is authority? Power. So seven horns is God power. Seven eyes and I, every time you see the word I in the Holy Bible, replace it with knowledge. Replace it with knowledge. I represents knowledge. Number seven, we said, is perfection, completion. Seven days a week. It's a perfect cycle. So, Christ in his knowledge eyes is perfect seven eyes. He is perfect in his knowledge and horn power, seven horns. He is perfect in his power. This lamb of God or the, from the tribe of Judah is perfect in his power and perfect in his knowledge. P 
power outside, knowledge inside. From outside, no one can beat him. And from inside, no one can deceive him. He is all knowledge. You cannot bribe him. You cannot cheat on him. You cannot lie to him. He knows everything and he knows you more than you. So he is all knowledge from within and he is all power from without. You cannot overcome him and you cannot lie to him. He is perfect. One thing you can do, come to him with a contrite heart and say, Lord, I have sinned. Have mercy on me, son of David. Have mercy on me. Confess your sins. That's all you can do. Don't ever go and say, Lord, I sinned, but believe me, Lord, it wasn't my fault. It was that guy over there. <laughs> he will not hear you. Say, Lord, I've sinned, and it was my fault. Lord, I said this, and it was my doing. It was my fault. Confess your sins. Don't blame no one. Blame yourself. Then he will love you. And he say, now you're talking. Since you spoke the truth, I am the truth. You got me now. Now I've got you. Don't worry about your sins. I'll make you whiter than snow. Just trust in me. It's 806. Told you today it's a bit early. <laughs> When we come to Bible preaching, it is doing one thing. Bible preach is preparing you for the main meal. You know, when you go to a restaurant, I don't know, have they opened now? I think they're open now. I think <laughs> the mother of Corona is sort of fading away now. <laughs> Actually, I just want to say to the employers, please do not force your employees to receive the jab. Let people to be free and choose for themselves. Guys, please, please I beg you, you are not God. This body is not yours. You have no jurisdiction. You have no authority over no one's body. Let that be human being decide what to accept and what not to accept to enter their body. So the prime minister to the premiers to the employers. Mr. Prime Minister, don't say this is not a federal a mandate. This is not a federal jurisdiction. It is a state. The state have the the right to decide on what to do. Stop passing the buck. Be a lion once in your life. Don't be a chicken. <clears throat> Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. President, Mr. King, with all love and respect, you're not God. You're a piece of dust. You're a human being like anyone else and everyone else. Do not impose these nonsense rules. Isn't it enough? You've jabbed people too. Now you're saying if you don't get the booster, you are, you are not vaccinated at all. My goodness. We thought you were going to be a Superman after the two. <laughs> Even the duck flies higher and further than me now. I can't even walk before I used to. Now, health-wise, I'm stuffed. Pardon the French. The one who created all is the only one who has the right to decide what happens to us. Yet, when he comes, he doesn't impose nothing. He asks us, freely he gives us the choice 
Do you want to follow me? Do you love me? Do you trust me? Even God, the creator of everyone, does not come and force himself on no one. He says, I want you to choose freely to come and follow me and love me or to do otherwise. Then who are you people to impose these irresponsible mandates? And you know, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I don't know, something inside of me every time. You know, to my, to my beloved people in Canada, to my beloved people in Canada, Mr. Trudeau, with all love and respect, get a life. It is a shame, my dear friend, and I'll call you a friend because that's what my Lord Jesus taught me. It is a shame, my dear friend, to treat your own people in such dictatorship way. Are you trying to be Hitler again? Is this another Holocaust? Isn't it enough to ease? Or is there other th hidden agendas behind the scenes? I'll tell you one thing, my dear friend. Believe me, I'm saying it from the bottom of my heart with love and respect. Very soon, if you and the people that have the same mentality as you do not repent and come back from this evil way, Christ is coming for you. Let no one be mistaken and fooled by the enemy, Satan. Let no one be mistaken. There is no one, there is no one that ever came to this world, that ever existed in this world. There is no human being that can ever claim the following. I can do whatever I want and I will get away with it. That will never ever happen. So I'm saying it out of love and respect. You hurt people, you will be hurt. You kill people, you will be killed. This is the law of God, not mine, not yours, my dear friend. And you know what? You cannot, neither me nor you, can go against the law of God. We break it, the law of God will break us, and there is no escape from that. You can bring the entire army, you can bring the entire police force, but you cannot protect your spirit from the hand of the Almighty God. So please wake up. Enough, enough evil deeds. Enough pressure. People have had enough. They want to go out there to their own normal life once again. They want to enjoy the family gathering one more time. They want to go out freely. Stop masking people. This mask, give it back to Anthony Fauci and the WHO, World Health Organization, the CDC and the FDA and the likes of them. Is there a lion amongst you or are you all chicken? Well, if you have been bought with money, money will not come to your rescue when your spirit leaves the body, my dear Prime Minister. Money will not come to your rescue, neither the Freemason nor the elites and whatever you want to call them or whatever they call themselves. When that spirit leaves the body, they will face one person. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is the truth. There is no escape from it. I am warning you out of love. Come back to the Lord and let Canada come back to Christ one more time. I believe Canada once upon a time was a Christian country. Today the government is a secular government. Just like Europe. They denied Christ. People want to live. Are you trying to tell me, Mr. Prime Minister of Canada, 
and all the prime ministers of Allah queue and the president and the leaders, all the leaders of the world. Are you trying to tell me that you have so much concern for the well-being of your people, you're, you are imposing all these measures? <laughs> Who are you trying to kid? Not everyone is a, is a little kid, by the way, okay? Not everyone. So we know where these mandates are coming from. We know very well. Stop playing this little game because you don't look very nice in it. It's very childish. Well, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, he said no more restrictions. One word, everything gone. No more social distancing, no more masks, no more mandates, no more pa vaccine passports, nothing. Yeah, this should have been done from day one because it was just a flu. Oh, it came from Wuhan. Oh, oh. And believe me, believe me, the world has become like a circus. They're jumping and... Uh, guys, we need adults as leaders. We need mature people as leaders. We need, we need people of, of great calibers, not childish. So stop saying, Mr. Speaker, oh, we had to do no speaker, no microphone, no nothing. Get a life and wipe everything. Let people just live. And to the health minister, do you think you're paying for the health system? It's the taxpayer's money. It's the taxpayer's money. When anyone wants to leave this world, not once, when they are, when the time comes that they leave this world, please do not leave this world as a traitor. Leave it as a warrior. Do not leave this world as an enemy, leave it as a friend. Do not leave this world as a dictator, leave it as a servant. Do not leave this world as a God, as a God, leave it as a piece of dust. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. And to the church leaders, if there is a time you stand up for your Christ, it's today. Don't ever let your Christ down. He who is embarrassed of me before the world, I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, will be embarrassed of him before the angels of my heavenly Father. I am the lion and the lamb. I have seven horns and seven eyes. My power horns is perfect, seven. And my eye knowledge is perfect, seven. My knowledge is perfect. My power is perfect. You mess with me, I'll wipe you. You lie to me, I'll break you. You come to me as you are, and you better be honest with me. For I know you before I put you in your mother's womb. I knew you from the very beginning. Mr. Justin Trudeau. Mr. Bill Gates, Mr. George Soros, Mr. Klaus Schwab, and all the secret societies, Mr. Scott Morrison, Mr. Joe Biden, and all the leaders of the European nations. And we need to pray for Ukraine, my beloveds. Pray for Ukraine and Russia. We ask Mr. Putin, to rethink and reevaluate again. Mr. Putin, we need the Lord Jesus. Russia is a beautiful Christian Orthodox to the core. And I love the orthodoxy of the Russian world. I love it. When they chant, they make me fly into heaven. 
When they celebrate the Holy Mass, I, I don't feel that I am on earth. I am truly in heaven. We need to represent the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus is more than capable of protecting Russia. Mr. President, Mr. Putin, when you focus on Jesus Christ, he will put your enemies at your feet. You don't need to fire a bullet. We need the Lord Jesus. America, stop the nonsense that is happening in the governmental level. We don't want traitors in the White House. We want faithful, loyal people to America and to the rest of the world with loyalty and honesty. And Australia, my beloved Australia, my beautiful Australia, my beautiful true blue down under might. Let's put the prawns on the barbie. I had a barney with me, boss, the other day. The little girl gave me the bullet. I got no bread. I got to put the bite on you, mate. Let Aussie country, we need to protect this beautiful nation. We need to protect this beautiful nation. No more lefties. We need people to be right with God. We need people to be right with God. The left, we leave it to Satan. The left is darkness, my dear friends. Stand on the right hand where the light shines on you from above. You need the Lord Jesus more than ever. I pray the next elections is done fairly and honestly. No cheating in the system like they did in America. The Lord is all eyes, knowledge, and His horns, power. He sees everyone and everything. Remove the lockdowns. Trust me. Trust me. It's all good. Get your vitamins up and running, eh? And have your, 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 your you know, um, your prawns, and eat healthy, I, what virus? All good. Sneeze it off a couple of days, and you'll be roaring like a lion. Then don't worry, Mr. Hazard, we're not going to waste your money. We need real men. We need real men both in the religious sector and the secular world. We need real men. Jesus is the real man. Choose him, he'll make you a real man. You don't, you'll always be enslaved. You will never enjoy freedom. Freedom is, la is here in this man. Pray for Canada, pray for Ukraine and Russia, pray for Australia, pray for Europe, pray for America, pray for the Middle East, pray for Asia, China, Taiwan, Indonesia, Singapore, Vietnam, pray for the Philippines, pray for the whole world, pray for Africa, pray for the starving children. Pray for the homeless people. Pray for the afflicted people. Pray for the rejected people. Pray for, for the forgotten people. Pray for the lost people. Pray for those who are in prison. Pray for those who are in hospitals. Pray for those who are naked. Pray for those who are hungry and thirsty. Pray for those who are with no sense of direction. Pray for everyone. Jesus Christ is love. Jesus Christ is light. Jesus Christ is beauty. Jesus Christ is holiness. 
Jesus Christ is the only way, is the only truth, and is the only life. Jesus Christ is the real deal. Jesus Christ is the one and only. Make him your dad. Make him your mom. Make him your brother. Make him your sister. Make him your friend. Make him your home. Make him your country. Make him everything that you ever need to be. Make him. Make him my beloved. Let's stand for the finale prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved. God bless. standing here before you knowing you are in control resting in your heavenly glory let your will be done for me I cast my burden down to you, Lord, knowing you will take them all. I'm trusting in your blood you shed for me. I know you've called. Worshiping.